President Biden, Democrats, and the media all mocking and some even rooting for the seizure of former President Trump's assets. Biden saying at a campaign reception, quote, just the other day, a defeated looking man came up to me and said, Mr. President, I have crushing debt and I'm completely wiped out. And I had to look at him and say, Donald, I'm sorry, I can't help you. And then, of course, the media piled on. We begin tonight with some cold, hard facts. Donald John Trump is broke and begging for money. Just last night, I got like one of those video ads that pop up before you yeah. watch a video, and it was like Donald Trump Jr.'s face saying, Ew. give us $5, chip in. I was like, wow, God, you guys are scraping. Something tells me over the weekend Trump's going to start talking about how strong Vladimir Putin is, and suddenly a dump truck full of rubles will pull up and cover this for him. I'm so sorry. <laughs> so, <laughs> as it turns out, you know who <laughs> says he cannot come up with the cash <laughs> to cover his $400 million plus bond in his New York fraud case. <laughs> so, oh. is Letitia James, like, gonna just... Do you need a tissue? I, I don't Can't know do. if I'm laughing or crying. Chris, uh, let's start with the president. I thought he was supposed to be the unifier. I thought he was the one that was supposed to hold the decorum in the room that terminates anyone immediately who acts disrespectful under his watch, and now he is kneeling in the gutter. I feel like this is that sitcom that started out where everybody watched it and talked about it, and now it's like 10 years into the show and it's still going, and some of the actors are still there, and you're like, ugh, nobody watches that anymore. This is, this is exhausting. We have so many other issues uh, pressing. You know, this is not about the president. Th this is about a legal precedent uh, that is going to shift the way in which development occurs in this country. We're talking about urban areas that may not get projects allocated to them because of fears of legal uh, repercussions. Mm -hmm. The collateral damage here is absolutely critical, and no one's talking about that. Mm -hmm. Marie, part mm -hmm. of my personal issue with this, having been in a ton of prisons, having sat in sentencing, there is no joy in a felony conviction. There's no joy in any conviction. There's no joy ever because it is always a terrible tragedy when humans are getting the weight of the government against them, regardless of the crime, and let alone a victimless one. And I thought these same media personalities are the one that are telling us we shouldn't civically condemn any convicted felon or anyone that has a criminal rap because that is something that should be away from the assessment of the human. Now, they're the first persons to demonize someone that is on the other side of the courts. Well, I'm not going to sit here and make fun of it or laugh about it. I don't think it's funny. It's not just the, the money that he has to pay because of some of the financial issues. It's also related to E. Jean Carroll. Donald Trump is facing a very significant financial cash crisis. I think that's pretty clear. I would say two things politically. The first is a lot of the money that he's be raising politically is now going to pay his legal fees. And his donors have to decide if that's something they're okay with. Last month, you know, number of months, Biden is outraising Trump on the campaign trail. Money doesn't win elections, but it sure helps. So I think this is just an indication that Donald Trump is facing serious legal jeopardy, not just if he can pay this or not. And if he declares bankruptcy, that is a political problem as well. But he has a number of other felony counts he still has to face in court between now and November. And Kaylee, in another demonstration of behavior being beneath the office, Ted Lieu loved to jump in as well, who can't even spell judgment correctly and yet also mocked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Ted Lieu said Trump claims he is a billionaire, but he can't pay a $464 million judgment. That means he is lying. How do I know math? Well, he found an unlikely defender, President Trump did, in Mark Cuban, who said what is basic common sense to anyone who has an understanding of business. Mark Cuban said this. You you are wrong on this topic, Ted. Net worth is different than cash in the bank. We're in a zero interest rate environment for a long time. Keeping cash in the bank or even money markets was dumb. In fact, searching for yield is what killed small banks last year. So a little fact check there. I think we'd be remiss if we didn't mention the breaking news that there has been a deal reached that now you will have Truth Social that will go public on Monday, which is estimated to bring in Trump three to three point five billion dollars. The only question is there's a six month waiting period, but right. a board can wait that Donald Trump Jr. is on the board, the CEO is Devin Nunes. So this could all end with, with one stroke of a pen by a board with True Social and the money that's brought in. Trump laughing all the way to the bank and meeting that. that bond. Yeah, and he also posted on True Social even before the, um, 
True Social went is, announced that it was going public that he currently has almost five hundred million dollars in cash. Uh, so maybe this isn't going to happen. Um, one thing that I do think, e even if um, Letitia James does start taking his assets, he could still win politically. And even Frank Ludd said that on CNN, who was no supporter of Donald Trump, he said, if the attorney general starts seizing Trump's properties, you reelect him in twenty twenty four. Taking his golf courses, taking his homes, that's all going to play out on camera. It's also going to be repeated on the campaign trail. And it could be the single biggest example of Donald Trump saying that the justice system is stacked against him. Not only Very him, cool. then he says it's also stacked against Republicans as well. Yeah, and he's right. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.